Hello, and welcome to the third devlog for Cloudscape. I'd like to just give another super quick acknowledgement to the growth of the channel over the past couple of weeks. Last video we hit 1,000 subs, and as of recording this, we are getting really close to 5,000 subs. Huge thanks to everyone following along and liking my videos. This video will cover world generation and how I'm going about building the main island players will start on. Before I start, you may have noticed the interface changed just a bit. I'm trying out a new thing for the health and energy display, and also I finally got rid of the huge clock text and moved it to the bottom of the right corner. Uh, the, the text right now is kind of off-center, but uh, it's just for testing purposes, and I, I also changed the, the health and the energy, um, so they're also now in the bottom center. Neither of these changes are permanent, just testing out how they feel. So right now, this is the current state of the environment in the game. If I zoom out here, you can see the entire island, but I don't think that I'll have the ability to zoom out like this in, this far in the game, uh, simply because I don't think it's going to perform very well, and also because chunks don't actually load in that far. Uh, you can see around the outside edge of the island that there's no trees, because the chunks there aren't loading in. I chose to use chunk loading in my game because it allows me to have really large maps without any big performance hits. Loading thousands of objects into memory isn't really a great idea, so chunk loading only loads in the surrounding area, so it's much easier to deal with. At first I had chunks unloading instantly as you left an area, but a big problem arises from doing that. The problem is if the player quickly walks back and forth between the seam of two chunks, it's going to be loaded and unloaded really abruptly, and it can lead to issues like a chunk not properly loading or a chunk being removed too quickly before changes are saved to it. So the solution is to just give an old chunk a moment to save before it unloads. If the player enters back into the chunk's area before it unloads, the chunk stops the unload and just stays loaded. This way the player can wiggle between two chunk areas with no problems. An interesting thing to note is I'm actually currently loading in the entire terrain regardless of chunk loading. You can see the entire island is loaded in the, into the screen without all of the objects being loaded in. This isn't necessarily going to stay this way, and I can tweak it so only the surrounding area of the terrain loads in just like the objects. I'm storing the terrain and the objects in two separate files. The terrain is stored as mesh info, and the object chunks store all of the object data parented to each chunk object. By the way, a lot of people have been asking what I'm building the game with, and the answer is that I'm using Unity. People have also asked if I'm using tile maps, and the answer is no. I'm not using the Unity tile map features at all. And instead, I'm storing the tiles as UV coordinates and a flat mesh. The reason behind this decision is simply because the tile map features in Unity is, is not very good at handling changes made to the tile map in real time, or loading and unloading large chunks of tiles quickly. So the objects all get stored in separate chunk files, and this includes the trees, the rocks, plants, items, and so on. This allows me to store a lot more information about each object, including what image to show, what state the object is in, and all of the variables the object might be storing. For example, a tree needs to store how many hits it has taken, whether it's cut or uncut, what type of tree it is, and other info. All of this info gets stored into the object chunk files. So that sort of explains the chunks, but doesn't really explain how I'm generating the island itself. The island shape is achieved by using Perlin noise that I apply a falloff to in order to get a central landmass. I've seen a lot of procedural games where the noise just goes from one edge of the screen to the other, which I think is kind of weird because you end up with a bunch of dead ends where the map just sort of cuts off. Once I'm happy with what the Perlin noise is generating, I then need to provide some rules to tell the engine which intensity of the noise represents which type of block. So in this case, really low intensity values end up being the beach, with higher intensity being the dirt and the highest intensity being grass. This gives it a nice island type shape. However, that only gives us some land, but nothing on it. The next step is to add decoration using similar procedural generation. The short grass, the small flowers and pebbles scattered across the grass are the result of another round of Perlin noise at a smaller scale being applied to the grass areas. This also includes adding some random patches of dirt and shallow water around the island. The end result is a kind of neat island, but it still lacks a lot of things, and procedural generation can leave things to be desired. Sometimes the noise is a bit rough, and you end up with weird tile issues or just really bad looking areas of land or detail. I made the decision that I'm going to take the generated level from that point and actually start handcrafting it. What this means is there will be dozens and dozens of different variations of the starting island. However, each one is going to be handcrafted by me. I don't really trust procedural generation to fully handle the job. While full procedural generation would allow for infinitely different islands, it also allows for situations where players end up with really bad islands that don't make any sense, or they have a lot of glitches with tiles. 
So to provide myself with a little peace of mind, I'm handcrafting based off of the procedural results. This sort of gives me a starting canvas to work on and allows me to go in and really give each island some personal touches and better detailing. I'm also doing all of the raising and lowering of the terrain by hand. This means the lakes, the rivers, the divots and cliffs are all hand painted into the island. All this means for the player is that they get to experience a different well crafted island each time and will never get a badly generated island. Once I'm done laying down details and cleaning up some of the weird noise issues, I can save the island and it's ready to be used. One thing that I'm leaving completely procedural is the actual generation of the objects on the island. When the player starts a new game, the island loads up based on one of the random island designs I've built. From there, the game will actually generate all of the trees, rocks, bushes, and other objects randomly in each chunk based on a different type of noise. The noise I'm using for these objects is the Poisson Disc method. Basically what it boils down to is that it provides a set of instructions to make sure that objects are properly spaced apart. This way we never get trees growing too close to cliffs or two trees growing right next to each other which doesn't really give them enough space. I can also further adjust these settings to allow for some objects to still clump together like the tall grass. With this totally random object generation in play, I think it will make each new game a bit different while also still being fundamentally the same. There won't be wildly different objects generating between different new games. In the future I think this will help to allow for game guides to still make sense even with some of the game being random. Each player will have a similar yet different experience. The goal is to make the game as replayable as possible without making things so random that each playthrough is wildly unpredictable and potentially not fun. I don't think players would necessarily enjoy starting on an island with almost no trees or an island with no bodies of water aside from the ocean. I mean, maybe you want that kind of challenge and maybe I can add in some kind of option to allow for that, but for normal playthroughs I want to keep things a bit more fair. I want the environment in Cloudscape to have a lot of things to interact with and feel alive. Right now you can brush up against trees, grass, and flowers and they react accordingly. You can mine stones and you can chop trees for resources. Soon you'll be able to pick flowers, but that isn't a thing just yet. I want to add a lot more details like things being affected by wind, fire, and water, and so on. But those are all planned for the future. Right now it only works for objects on the beach, but as you can see, different random objects will spawn around the beach throughout the day. They will have different rarities, and what shows up will depend a lot on different factors like the season, time of day, and weather. This probably seems really similar to Animal Crossing New Horizon, which I'm sure a lot of you are probably playing, but I definitely plan to add a lot more to this aspect of the game so it's a bit more interesting. Oh yeah, and I fixed throwing and dropping of items. Now they actually come from the hands instead of the feet, so I think it looks a lot better this way. One last thing I guess I should mention, you'll also be able to fully modify your island. So right now this works via two different tool items, but I plan to have a type of building interface to make this easier. So right now I'm using the divot tool which like kind of indents the ground and digs uh, large squares out of the ground. Um, you'll be able to modify your island to have these kind of divots if you want and you can also fill these divots with water as you can see over here to the right. You can also build cliffs so you can come in here and just lay down some cliffs. And you'll be able to build uh, cliffs any way you want as well. So. You'll be able to raise and lower all of the land in the island so that you can have it exactly how you want it. If you want like a large cliff top house, if you want to have a lake, lakeside view, you can do anything you want with the terrain. I'm liking all of the suggestions for future videos and I think at some point I'll do a Q&A which will just answer a lot of questions and kind of go more into my background, how I came up with the idea for the game and other stuff. As for what I'm doing with development right now, I'm currently working on the task system. The task system is a way to give the player small tasks to do in order to progress to later stages of the game. I want the game to be sort of an open world sandbox, so these tasks aren't necessarily something a player absolutely needs to follow and stick to. As you can see right now, there's nothing here, but eventually there will be a list of tasks that will let you know what kind of thing you need to be doing next. I look at it more like you are given this open world to explore and do whatever you want, and the tasks are just kind of a path for you to take if you get lost or don't know what to do next. Tasks will generally be pretty quick to complete, and you will usually be rewarded with a new task and some type of progress in the game. For example, the first task will just have you equipping your tools, um, the next task will have you gather a certain amount of resources, uh, gathering that amount of resources will unlock a recipe for a crafting table. The thing to note is you don't need to read these tasks in order to get the crafting table. That will happen regardless. You'll actually have the option to entirely hide the tasks if you feel like they are holding your hand a bit too much. 
An issue with open world games like this is sometimes the game just doesn't tell the player what to do, and they're left wandering around with no sense of direction. The goal is to avoid these issues and let the player have their freedom while also providing them with that sense of direction. That pretty much sums things up for now. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. You can also follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. I'm active every single day on the Discord and I'm more than happy to have a chat. You can find those links in the description below. As always, thanks for watching.